Now we're going to take what we've learned with solar power design and apply it to make it easy on ourselves to make use Excel to do some calculations. So what we're going to look at is the same problem that we did on the previous video, but now we're going to do it in Excel instead of um, by the hand calculations that we did last time. So we can see we have a bunch of assumptions up here, and we have the total load wattage, the hours, days to run load, etc. And the, all the assumptions are filled in from what we looked at um, on the notes last time. Let's get to the calculations. The first thing we're going to calculate is the inverter input power. And if we remember, that was the total load wattage divided by the inverter efficiency. So we're going to type formula in Excel. We're going to type equals whatever cell the total load wattage is, and that's B2, and divided by, which is a slash, the inverter efficiency, which is B5. And then we're going to hit enter, and Excel will calculate that for us. Then, we're going to look at the number of inverters needed. So we remember, we looked at, if we did the first calculation, we took the input power, and we divided by the inverter maximum power rating. So let's do that first. So the it equals the input power, which is bit cell B14, and divided by the maximum power rating. Okay, let's hit enter and see what happens. So we really want a whole number here. This this 0.44 is good, but really we would round up because we're not going to buy 0.44 inverters. So how we round up in Excel is we use a formula called seal, sealing, which is like this. So our first thing, sealing just means round up. That's all it means. And what we're going to say is we want to round up to the nearest one. So that's why we put the one in there. And when we do that and hit enter, you can see that it rounds up to 1, which is what we want. And you'll see something similar in the, in the next equations, so we'll go over that one more time. Now, let's calculate the amperage output of the charge controller. So that's in amps, and we know that it's going to be the input power of the inverter divided by the voltage of the system. So let's go ahead and do our formula again. Take the input power of the inverter divided by the voltage of our system and hit enter. Okay, so now we have the 16.667. So now let's try the number of charge controllers needed. Again, if we remember, we take the amperage of the charge controller and we divide by the charge controller maximum amp rating. Now, again, we have a problem because we didn't round up here. So again, what we're going to do is add the ceiling function to the front. And when we do that, it will round up for us. So, these are just a few basic equations to get you started. You're going to need to learn a bunch more um, and put a bunch more equations in when if you do your solar power design. You're also going to want to add other locations when you do um, your solar power design. So, let's say we added another location. So we'll just call it location number two. Now, in this case, we don't have anything that really um, matters, so that really changes. If the inverter input power, the number of inverters, and the charge controllers are going to stay the same from each location. So Excel has this nice thing called autofill. And I'm going to show you how autofill works. So it's going to be, uh, but let's, so let's see, let me show you um, how autofill is supposed to work. And let me show you an error that many people make all the time. So let's just drag this down. That, that's what autofill does. If we do that, we see that we went from 200 to 0.2. We still want this to be 200. So what happens is, if we double click here, we see it's B2 minus B5. We still want, down here, this to be B2 minus B5. But when we autofill, it changes it to B3 divided by B6. So how we can change this is something called absolute references. So absolute references are gone over in another in uh, many other videos, but I'll just mention it now. If you hit the F4 key, it makes the B2 an absolute reference. Then you can click on the middle of B5 and make that an absolute reference. Now, watch what happens when I drag down now. When I use the autofill button and drag down, we have 
B2 and B5 up here, and B2 and B5 up here. So what I would do is I'd do the same thing in here to change these to absolute references, and then I would drag down. So it might make sense as you go through to make all of your um, formulas, whenever you're uh, um, referring to the assumptions, absolute reference, and whenever you're referring to something down here, not an absolute reference. And hopefully you'll see as you go through why that's the case. Thank you for watching.